these are very strange times and uh, we need to prepare adequately to contend in the warfare that is required to open the door of access at this time. Before you sit, I would like you to pray that the Lord will clothe you with grace. There is an adventure in the spirit that is open before us. And only men that have supplies beyond their natural capacity will gain entrance into the open door. That your journey in 2022 will not be a race in futility, but God will strengthen you with might by his spirit in your inner man. Can you ask for his support? Ask for his help. Ask for his strength. Ask for his enablement. Because this year, we will maximize the potential of the grace of God. No stone will be left unturned. God will help us. God will strengthen us. God will cause his face to shine upon us. Oh Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Once again, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your compassion. As we journey again in the place of prayer, we ask that you quicken us with the counsel of your spirit. Make mighty men from our numbers and be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may be seated. So in our study, we saw that um, there are three kinds of watchmen. Those that have the grace to be able to detect what the enemy is doing. So we want to move to the second category. Those that God equips with grace to be able to design what he himself is doing. It's not as if if you are such a warrior and the anointing upon you in your watchings gives you more uh, more insight into that which the devil is doing. It doesn't mean that you will not be able to access God. It doesn't mean you will not be able to discern angels. But over time in practice we have come to discover that there are some people that if the devil wants to attack us as a congregation like this there are some people that are likely to receive that frequency. It's not as if every of us, all of us cannot pick that frequency, but over time we have found out that there are some among us that the grace upon their lives makes it easy for God to reveal um, the plans of the enemy to them. Okay? Now, so we are looking at the second category of watchmen. These are such watchmen uh, that have the capacity to discern what the Lord is doing. Now, in discerning what the Lord is doing, there are a few metaphors that I need to define and bring to your notice. Because God is not a mortal. God is not flesh and bone. God is spirit. And if we are going to discern the workings of God, the movements of God, uh, it is going to be around some metaphors that are captured in the book of Revelation. So what does it mean to watch the movements of God? So we are going to study along those lines today. And just in case you've been careless in these areas, uh, this session of prayer and Bible study is designed to send a clarion call to wake you up from your slumber. In the name of Jesus Christ. In designing the workings of God, the first thing that you must understand is what the Bible calls trumpets. You must know what trumpets mean. Trumpets. If you have your Bible, please turn to the book of Revelation chapter 4. Trumpets. Now, a lot of people find it difficult to trace God. A lot of people find it difficult to locate God. 
And basically, the reason why it is difficult to trace God and to locate God for many of us is because there was no time in your life when you were trained to be able to track the movements of God. So in the next few lectures, as we talk about watchmen that track God, we'll begin to talk about the fundamentals of discerning the workings and the movements of God. And part of those fundamentals happen to be um, trumpets. Revelation 4.1 After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. In the realm of God, you will stumble on that metaphor. You will stumble on trumpets. And just in case you want to know what is going on in the throne room, you cannot avoid colliding with trumpets. But you see, that's a metaphor. I need to define what a trumpet is. And if we scroll to the book of Revelation, once and again, you are going to find trumpets here, trumpets there. That's how the shape of the layer where God resides looks like. If you are not um, in a hurry and you want us to dig into these matters, then I will invite you to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14. If you are there, please turn your Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. We'll do a quick reading and uh, I will define to us what trumpets are. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 beginning from verse 4 so that we get the whole context of our reading and uh, if you are consistent in fellowship this year this 2022 from January to December you should become a Bible student at the end of the year this year you should become deep in the understanding of the things of God because I have a determination to ensure that each and every one of us is equipped to be able to engage God so practically in their lives that it will be evident that God is factored, God is figured with you. In 1 Corinthians 14 verse 4, the Bible says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. When we study the book of 1 Corinthians 14, there is a high point of the manifestations of the Spirit. You see, the extent to which the body of Christ, the church of the Lord, can prosper from, from a spiritual activity is the degree to which it edifies, it builds up. So, if you speak in tongues, you are building up yourself. The activity that you are doing is producing self-centered energy. But you see, what pedestals the guy that prophesies above, the guy that speaks in tongues, is that the person that prophesies edifies the church. It means the scope of empowerment. The extent of empowerment in his prophetic ability is much more than the scope of empowerment than speaking in tongues gives. And the objective of ministry in the body of Christ is so that men might be edified. It's on the strength of that that prophecy is superior to speaking in tongues. Because if anyone is edified through speaking in tongues, it is only you. But when prophecy goes forth, the church can be strengthened. Are you with me? So you must understand that the, the perspective from whence Paul is bringing these deliverables is the perspective of edification. That's the quiet, the quiet intonation that shapes the perspective of emphasis in the book of um, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Are you, are you with me now? 
All right, so let's go on with the reading. Verse 5. I would that ye all speak with tongues, but rather that ye prophesy, for greater is he that prophesied than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. This is the scripture that our brothers in the Orthodox Church or churches have used to penalize um, anyone that speaks in tongues. <laughs> and some of my friends from the Orthodox Potters, they are laughing uh, behind their nose uh, because, uh, amen, we, are, we all came from, especially the ones that come from my own peculiar block in the Orthodox arrangement, uh, they are there is a smile. I understand the meaning of that smile, actually. So this is the scripture that was used to say, all right, if you are speaking in tongues and no one is in the vicinity that has the competence to um, interpret what you are saying, it will be better for you to keep quiet. First of all, you, you calm down, okay? You calm down. Now, you must understand that the philosophy behind these deliverables is edification. That's the argument that Paul is bringing here. And it's also needful for you to understand that speaking in tongues as, um, as, as an item of edification, an item of personal education, is different from speaking in diverse tongues. Speaking in tongues as an item of edification is a tool, is a gift that the Holy Spirit, the only gift that the Holy Spirit gives that you can operate at will because God knows that uh, your capacity, your ability in the spirit is dependent on your ability to stir up the operations of Christ in your vessel. And the technique through which the operation of Christ can be stirred up is the technique of personal edification which is speaking in tongues. Are you still with me? Now, you see, in order for me to come preach to you today, I have spoken in tongues. I have not even counted how many hours. But you see, I've done it for so many years that is now my lifestyle. All right? So I need to speak in tongues in order to activate the energy of Christ that is in my vessel so that it will be easy for Christ to inspire me when I'm doing the work of the ministry. Do you understand that? So that system of personal edification is required for every believer to build his capacity. The Bible says, this is an admonition from scripture, building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. It's, it's a command that an apostle gave that we should spend time building up our most holy faith. There are dimensions of believing that become possible when you gain heights in the spirit. Are you with me? And this operation of personal edification is different from coming under the influence of the Holy Spirit and speaking a diverse tongue. When you speak a diverse tongue, it means the Holy Spirit is communicating a message and is on the instance of diverse tongues that interpretations are needed so that we can understand the mind of God. So we have tongues as an instrument of edu edification and we have the gift of diverse tongues which requires interpretation before we can understand. So the reason why um, in our orthodox, our local orthodox setting, uh, there is a confusion. And the confusion is that they think that all tongues are the same. They don't know that one tongue is meant for, one category of tongues is designed as an instrument of edification for the believer. And we are commanded from scripture, New Testament scripture, to perpetually build up our most holy faith praying in tongues. Are you there? Are you with me? So our orthodox teachers could not differentiate between speaking in tongues as an instrument of edification and operating sovereignly under the influence of the gift of diverse tongues which requires interpretation before we can design the heart of God, the mind of God that is captured within that manifestation. So Paul is speaking here, and the emphasis is edification. It's on the strength of this emphasis that he categorizes the guy that prophesies over and above him that speaks in tongues. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. 
All right. So when you check those churches where the issue of tongues is sacrilege, one of the things you are going to find is that the move of the Spirit is not going to be there. Next thing you'll find is that um, the power of God is not going to be there. The other thing you'll find is that witches will find a place, an abode, a heaven. An island of visitation. Because there's no fire there. They have cut out, they have put the Holy Ghost outside. So his activities, his discernment, his fire, his miracles will not be found in that place. Hallelujah. So you hardly see people transformed because the ministry of the Holy Spirit has been disallowed. I'm not a follower of religion. I'm a follower of Jesus. And so if you like, you want to camp in religion, I will leave you behind and continue. My, Jesus, Jesus is never wrong. He's always right. And so we'll follow him. You might be a master theologian and you don't believe what Jesus has sanctioned and we'll leave you behind. You'll do your theology. But we'll follow Jesus. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. All right. So the, the emphasis here is um, edification. It's on the strength of that that the person that prophesies is considered greater than him that speaks in tongues. Meanwhile, when you interpret diverse tongues that are spoken as communication of the Holy Spirit, conveying a message on the mind of God, when the interpretation takes place, is equal to prophecy. Is that clear? All right. Go on. Verse 6. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall it profit you except I speak unto you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine? So he's still talking about edification. So that's speaking in tongues. In its raw, crude state, the best it can achieve is your own personal edification. Are you there? But, if I speak by revelation, if I speak by knowledge, if I speak by prophesying, if I speak by doctrine, then you can now understand and the church can be edified. Is that clear? The subject matter is still what? Edification. Are you still with me? On the strength of these, we can now, okay, let's do seven and eight. Eight is my emphasis. Verse seven. And even things without life, giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harped? Then it brings us understanding in verse 8. For if that trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle. We are still talking trumpets. If what? The trumpet. Oh my, you are not still you are not with me. You are confused. If the trumpet gives an uncertain sound, the question is who shall prepare himself to the battle? So based on this scripture, who can tell us what trumpets are? Trumpets are announcements. If you are going to know the layer of God, you are going to know the realm of God, you must look out for announcements in the administration of the kingdom of heaven. Once and again, God proclaims, God makes announcements. You know those of you that watch um, Nigerian movies, the epic, I'm, I'm talking about the epic movies, there's always this uh, palace and there's a king somewhere sitting and he has a conclave of elders. And uh, based on the events taking place in the locality, the king comes up and makes a decree. But, you see, the decree has been made, but nobody knows about it. Then we have an agency through which information is disseminated. It's called the town crier. Are you with me? And so the town crier picks the words from the mouth of the king and begins to proclaim it. We cannot talk about a kingdom situation without announcement. So, the metaphor, trumpets, in the book of Revelation, actually refer to, what? Ah, this is my class, it's dull, it's a dull class. It refers to what? Announcement. Good. So, 
The question now is, when last did you receive an announcement from God? Well, let me show you a typical example of an announcement before I, I zero down on you. Then you'll find out that for many years you have not been watching in the realm of God. You have been in the outer court. Bothered about the things of men. You have not been bothered about the things of God. And that's why there is, there is this, low, this low profile in the body of Christ. The average believer doesn't know the things of God. We are looking for things that are not lost. Looking for promotions and vehicles and money. Meanwhile, when God started the creation project, he, he was broke. He didn't have any money. There is a way God does his things. You will be behaving like a man and you'll be subject to all the limitations that are bound toward men until you begin to learn the ways of God. I will tell you again and again until you hear, when we started this project, this place you are in now, the account balance was five million. Can somebody help me explain how five million became 900 and something million? There's an elder there. I'm seeing your white hair. You, because of your experience, maybe you have an insight to explain to us how five million became 900 and something. When God started the work of creation, he was broke. But when six days passed, he had arrived at the zenith of his creation. He commissioned it. He set it in motion. And all you have in creation sits on a delicate balance that an intelligent God set in motion. We are concerned about things that our human beings are concerned about. Instead of us to learn the ways of God and operate in his ways. And unfortunately, in every generation, the people are more attracted to the acts of God. And only few get to learn the ways of God. We are going to trouble you with God's ways this year. If, it's, if it chokes you and you escape, nobody will, will follow you up. If, you, if, you, if we throw the ways of God on you and you escape, no, I assure you, nobody will come to your house to disturb you and say, you are not in fellowship. It means you don't like yourself. When you are old, you will tell your grandson you miss God. The day you want to be sincere and you want to say the truth, you will say. <laughs> Announcements. So a man that is up to date with God is a man that is, knows the announcements of God for each season. The announcements of God. So let me show you some announcements. Um, can we do uh, Luke chapter 2 from verse 8 to 11. Just give you a prototype of an announcement. Because God is committed to announcing his intentions. Littered across scripture, you will find announcement after announcement. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. <laughs> That's what? A town crier. If God gives us time today, then I will explain what prophecy is. Because there are two, town, two categories of town criers that God has. The first are angelic. These are the, you can see the activity here. And what this angel is doing here is making what? Announcement. Many times we will never know what God is doing. We will not know the page that God is on until announcements are made. Because of that, God is committed to making announcements. So if you are someone that studies the move of God, you must be in custody of the announcements of God. I see a lot of us pray, but you, are, you don't know the announcement. You don't know the announcement. But there's a lot of prayer going on. 
I need to teach you how to structure your heart so that if there are announcements, you'll be able to pick it up. Because one of the things in the layer of God that makes you or places you in the position of advantage is that you heard the announcement from heaven. So you know what heaven is doing. And because of that, it is easy for you to align yourself and angulate yourself to receive grace to become a partaker of that which God wants to do. But if you have no idea about what God is doing, you are going to be outside of the economy of his administration. And unfortunately, many churches, many pastors, many believers, for many years, have gotten so used to being outside of what God is doing. So used to it. We have, we have administrative systems that are built to accommodate us apart from God. So maybe when a year starts, we say, this is our year of, um, help me now, help me. Year of what? I can't hear you. A year of turnaround. <laughs> if I take that turnaround stuff and we go to the Bible, you will find out that's just from Bible study, not checking it in the spiritual. Bible study, you will find out that's not what God is saying. So many people have not traveled close to God enough to be able to pick the frequency of his thoughts. We have gotten so used to living outside of his pavilion. Oh my. When you begin to navigate in God, um, the Lord will begin to make announcements. That's his nature. That's how our God is. Well, let me support you with the scripture quickly. I guess we need to do Amos chapter 3 verse 8. This is the, I'm telling you about the nature of God. We need to take the microphone around and ask for feedback. When last did you hear an announcement from God? This is what prophet Amos says in Amos chapter 3 verse 8. He said the lion has roared who will not fear. The Lord has spoken who can but prophesy. You see, prophecy is one of the agencies through which God can make announcements. See, they are angelic announcements. They are angelic functionaries that are into the administration of announcements. They are also human functionaries that are into the administration of, function, of, of announcements. He said the lion has roared. Is there anybody in the territory that would not fear? He said the Lord has spoken. See, when the Lord speaks in his chambers, it is after he has spoken that prophets can pick what he has said and announce it. So the prophet is not a star. It's not a superstar. It's just someone that can pick the things that are going on in God's frequency. But the average believer has not developed himself enough to understand how to pick things from God's frequency. That's why most of us are victims. Victims of circumstances. Victims of wickedness. Victims of wizards. Victims of witches. The average Christian is a victim. Because he doesn't know the layer of God. So the first thing you'll find when you start coming close to God is our, our God is a God that makes announcements of the things that he is doing or the things that he wants to do. Have you read the scripture that says he came to his own and his own received him not? Have you read that scripture? The reason was because there was no announcement. There was no announcement to set the people on notice that God was coming. So he came to his own. And his own felt if God were to come, he would not come like this. His own received him not. An entire generation missed a move of God because the announcement was not adequate. I pray that God will help us to be able to hear his voice and to take our journey. The wisdom of God that comes to you will prescribe to you when it is time for you to stand, when it is time for you to sit, when it is time for you to walk away, and when it is time for you to run. But when you don't know what God is doing, you are likely to become a victim 
of the circumstances that are stirred up by the enemy. Most believers pray reactional prayers. Maybe headsmen have come and they picked two, two people in your family. It's as if when we mention headsmen, these days people almost have heart attack. That is, it has become our reality in Nigeria. The intercessors, they are no watchmen that can warn us that danger is coming. So most prayers we pray are in reaction to activities that are orchestrated by the devil. That means Satan can keep us busy. And we are moving like a pendulum in perpetual oscillatory motion under the manipulation of the enemy. Just because we do not have any inkling whatsoever of that which God is doing in our time. The first thing you will find when you start going close to God is that God will always make announcements as touching what he wants to do. If you wake up this night and say for the next 120 nights I'm going to be upstanding from 12 midnight to 2 a.m. I'm not going to have any prayer point. I will just stand speaking tongues for two hours and go sleep. Before you finish 47 day, you will hear an announcement. You don't need to be a, this. What I'm saying, you don't need to be a prophet before you pick these frequencies. The moment you begin to keep your watch, the prophetic will open. The reason is because of the prayer of Moses. You know Moses prayed the prayer in the Old Testament, in the book of Numbers chapter 11. He said, I wish that all the Lord's children were prophets and that he will put his spirit upon them. The prayer that Moses prayed in the book of Numbers chapter 11, God answered in the New Testament because in the New Testament he put his spirit upon all of us. So anyone here that is born again has the spirit of God upon his life. And Jesus, trying to educate us, told us that when the spirit of truth is come, there are several packages he comes with. First of all, he will guide us into all truth. That means he will take us into the realm of reality. He will furnish reality upon our hearts so that we can have capacity to handle things that are not visible, to hear things that are not audible, to manipulate things that we were not taught because we have the Holy Ghost. Such abilities are supposed to become the description of our everyday life because of our interfacing perpetually with the Holy Spirit. He said when the spirit of truth is come, he will show you things to come. That means, whereas you are limited by time and space, the Holy Ghost is not reckoned by time. He, he dwells in the realm of, a, of the eternal now. The past, the present, and the future is one for him. And so, because of the leanness and the deficiency of our frame of reference, which is called time, he can give you strategic insight of things that are yet to come. There is no way, and this is not for prophets. This is for people that have access to the Holy Ghost. I'm not talking about people that have gifts, a gift of the Spirit. I'm talking about people that have the Spirit. So if you decide to wake up and say, all right, because that was how I woke up when my father died, a good man. I discovered that <laughs> what you need to survive is not just being good. If there was any man that had to live because of his goodness, it was my father. He had to live. He must live. Hey! But he died. And he died untimely. And you, you know how children look helpless when their father died? I've been there before. As I was crying that time, as many people, I don't know what people were crying about, but I can tell you why I cried. My own cry was that I didn't know God enough to stop him from dying. And what his death did was that it made me to arm myself, to go on pilgrimage, a journey into God, and never to come back until I find him. I'm preaching here today because I found it. I pray somebody will be provoked. Hey. I pray somebody's heart will be stirred up. That I will, I will journey. I will journey. I will journey until I find him. When you begin to find him, maybe you stand up in the night. So I'm going for 200 days. Night vigil. 12 to 2. You will not even reach 60 before you start hearing announcements. The fact that you heard announcements 
is a proof that you have, you have stumbled into his corridor. Because that's the nature of our God. When he, the spirit of truth, is come. You can be baptized in the Holy Ghost, but the spirit of truth is not yet come to you. You will need to wake up and take your place as a watchman. And begin to do, practice your responsibility. As one that is waiting to hear God. What's the next policy of heaven? What's the next agenda? So that I can begin to implement it. If that is your, your heart, he will come to you. And he will speak to you. I know there are days when I monopolize God. Me, this me like this. As small as I am. I monopolize it. I've kept him in my room for seven hours before. I don't know whether he was talking to you then. But he was with me. <laughs> I don't know whether there was blackout in your own space. But I trapped him for seven hours. And by the time I came after the seven hours talk with God, I knew what to do. I knew where to go. I knew who to call. I knew who to answer. I knew the people's number on my phone to block for life. When you hear announcements, you become wise. Because most of the announcements are futuristic. It makes you strategic. Are you with me? If you know that Indomie, Indomie will become scarce, and one Indomie pack will become 7,000, you will buy the factory. Oh, announcements can change your story overnight. It's because, oh, you are not here. Do you still believe the Bible? It said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Your poverty is because he is not your shepherd. You are, there are things you will never enjoy in the covenant. Don't allow a babbling preacher deceive you. The preacher himself, look at his own life. <laughs> Has he seen the light? You will know. <laughs> because in theological school, they teach them how to talk. <laughs> Does he know Jehovah? Yeah, someone that knows Jehovah, there will be evidences to show. It's not just talk. He will, he will command some supernatural dimensions that science cannot explain. It means he's doing business in the deep waters. So if he speaks to you, you can now believe him. If, so, if somebody doesn't have any supernatural evidences to show, he has not met God. He, he studies much so he can talk, just like a medical doctor. Studied for six years. If you go before him, he will use one thing. He will put it here. Put it here. And put it here. And tell you, you are almost dead. <laughs> oh, am I to come in? Uh? The Holy Ghost will make you strategic, but the average believer will never wait on him. He will do other things. He can complain. He can even travel to the village and consult an oracle. He will wear face cap. The other day, you are not with me. The other day, an elder in the church, he went to Ankpa. I'm talking about, you know Ankpa? Where they consult a spirit called Emere, Emere. He put face cap so that nobody will know he's the See? Elders, elders visit Divias for insight. The reason is because he, he believes it's a burden to enter into the lay of God. I want to challenge you. It's easier to hear God than to hear the devil. The reason is because you are born again and the spirit of God is in your heart. Do you know the implication of that? How many of you bought a handset recently? Handset. Is there anybody you bought handset? Before you inserted the SIM, the calculator can work. Is that true? The touch light can work. You can check your, the calendar and check date. Did you buy the handset because of date? You bought it because of touch light. You bought it because you wanted communication. Is that true? But you see, the communication can never find expression until you introduce a SIM card. The SIM card can interpret the potential of the network, give you accessibility. You can browse with it, check your mail, send a text message. Chat with somebody in Los Angeles just because you have a SIM card. That's what happened to you. The day you gave your life to Christ, the Holy Ghost is a SIM card. It was inserted into your spirit man. You see, the design is that you are a vessel. You need a SIM card to operate. A bag of potential. But except the SIM card is inserted, it's only calculator 
and touch light. I will be walking. Your ultimate purpose will be neglected. And most of you have built your life on things that are departures from your ultimate purpose. The moment you insert the same card of the Holy Ghost into your vessel, you become compatible with heaven's network. You can pick things happening in the lay of God. It was Jesus that said that, not me. In the book of John chapter 3. Turn your Bible. Turn your Bible. Because with this issue of announcements, 90% of the people in this hall it's been long since you heard an announcement. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, the ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou do except God be, 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 be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So the kingdom of God is a layer of civilization, a layer of reality. But you will need to be born again before you can peep into that layer of civilization. The layer of civilization exists, but you'll be cut off from it permanently, perpetually, until you become born again. And when you become born again, the Holy Ghost is inserted into your spirit man. And the implication is that it gives you awareness of what is happening in the layer of God. Do you understand that? So when you decide to make prayer a preoccupation, like I did many years ago, I, did, I thought, oh, you are not here, you are not here, you are not here, you are not here, you are not here. I, I beheld the demons troubling my family. I saw, I saw an awe. They all stood on, on the top of our house and it the all was dancing by this. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And as the all was dancing up there, my elder brother became mad inside the sitting room. I, I was outside. I saw the all dancing. Saw my brother mad. Hey. Satan was a mystery to us. Everybody was afraid of Satan. Just like you are now. When they say Aleku, Aleku, you will, you will escape from there. And, and if you go to the village, they'll say, nobody should mention Aleku. Because, have you seen Aleku? Eh? <laughs> I made up my mind. I was going to seek God. That was when I knew that I was already connected to the network. So when I decided to seek the face of God, God began to make announcements. It was through the announcements God was making that I now started understanding hey, that the things that I've been afraid of were supposed to be afraid of me. Aleku is supposed to be afraid that I'm here. Oh. We were traveling recently. Someone that lost me dearly came and said um you will not see the people on the road. The kind of prayer that they pray for you. And then you say, Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I told the person, the people on the road <laughs> you need to be afraid of me. There's an understanding I have. I have seen where power dwells. You know? Hey, you have not gone close. That's why you are a fearful creature. I've seen where light dwells. I've seen it. I've seen where... You, you hear of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. I have seen him. The Holy Ghost. I have seen him. There are things you will see. It will not cut fear from your soul. It's because you have not been receiving announcements that you, you think you are just the third born of a family of seven. If you are doing census eh, and you can't Gabriel say 001 you can't say 002 can't John say 002 if you now reach Moses, how, how can you count Moses? Is he 003? Is Moses one man? What? How will you? You don't understand. This Moses, this one Moses, went into Egypt and challenged the gods of, 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 of Egypt. They are gods. You are not. You are not with me. Do you know how many people were, have been held in the bondage of terror? 
because of those gods. The 12 gods of Egypt. A, a mortal that has flesh and blood in his veins. He appeared with a stick. And through him, judgment came upon the 12 gods of Egypt. You, when you read your Bible, sometimes drop it and think. Was that one man? The gods of Egypt had to be afraid of Moses. Moses has heard announcements from God that has changed his thinking. You are thinking like a fugitive, thinking like an escapee. If somebody has stayed in prison before, when they maybe kidnappers kidnap you, when you come back home, if you hear, what, what you will think is. <laughs> The Lord, the Lord will have to give us some announcements to recalibrate our thinking so that we can be ready for great things. The things, the darkness that bedeviled people in your family. If you, if you receive the right announcements, your own case will be different. So when you come into the lay of God, oh my God, time has gone. Hey! Okay, we'll take it easy. We'll take it easy. When you come into the lay of God, you will see diverse kinds of announcements. That's how our God is. All right? All right. Once upon a time, I, I was praying. Why was I praying? I was praying because I noticed, I saw my grandfather. He was like a hundred and something years old. He, he never used a walking stick. He had a straight back. In fact, he was begging to die. He had good eyesight, no spectacles. My granddad begging to die. I knew my grandmother, 90 years old, not sickly, not in the hospital, strong. Oh. Then my granddad died now and died. And when my grandmom heard he had died, she died. That was a great love life. Hallelujah. So they buried them side by side. This is my grandfather I'm talking about. He married five wives. But at the end of the day, it was his first wife that lived with. The rest had died. So the jungle man, his first wife, Stayed with him to care for him. And the knowledge of his death led to her own death. <laughs> Jesus. Do you realize that after that man died, till this day that I speak to you, nobody in my family has been able to live up to 70 years. Meanwhile, I saw him at what? 100. Oh, does, do these things bother you at all? Do they bother you? Or they don't bother you? So I said I wanted to find out why there was untimely death in my family. And I, I, I was going to keep the watches until I hear an announcement from God about the issue of untimely death in my family. I was a youth copper posted to Kano. My residence was at Bompai Police Barrack. So when the footballers finish training on the football field and they leave, that's where my prayer starts. There was only one reason why I was on that pitch. Moving from one goal post to another goal post. From one goal post to another goal post. Why was I there? I wanted to find out why there was untimely death in my family. I'm praying today that some... Meanwhile, are you, are you there? Are you with me? Now, listen to me. Before I was determined to know the mind of God concerning the untimely death in my family, I didn't know the experience of what it means for you to seek God and get a response from him before that time. You get that? I didn't know how God was going to answer me, but I read my Bible. I found out that our God is literate, our God is alive, our God speaks, and our God answers. And that was enough for me. That guideline was enough for me. And I came to the football field and I'll pray in tongues from one goalpost 
to the other goalpost and I say, Jehovah, if you are there, hear my cry. I want to know why people don't live long in my family. You have, you have enlisted among the watchmen. Only the watchmen ask questions. The first secret of spiritual intelligence, I will say it again and again until you, you hear it. God does not speak much. He only answers much. Only people that come to him seeking to know, seeking spiritual intelligence, seeking insights. When you begin to desire insight, oh, he becomes proud of you. Because that's the way to ascend the mountain of grace. And I began to call upon him. Why do people die early? My dad was young. He was just 62. He had, he had excelled. 62 years cut off. You will hear this. My uncle has died 64, 65, 61. Ah! So I said... <laughs> you know when you see a pattern then an intelligence is involved so I had to go to the heel of the Lord and I began to pray first night second night and guess what the answers were not forthcoming so I now added fasting sometimes you need to add spices to your endeavor you want to go to Boko and your car dies at Wanune it's not because it has problem there's no fuel just push it Please help me tell your neighbor, put for it. <laughs> I cried out. I cried out. I cried out. I cried out. Because when you begin to pray, pray like that, watch for signs. Sometimes God can speak to you. Sometimes God can speak through other people. Sometimes God, you can be attending a service and God possesses the preacher. And suddenly he can no longer preach his sermon. He begins to use his vocal cord to speak to you. If you, are, if you are a watchman and you know where to read, you will find your answers. I pray. And in the dream of the night, the Lord came to me. I will tell you about the work of angels, how angels operate. And I assure you, many angels have visited you, every one of you in this place. But the ability to discern them is the issue. So as we go further in the lecture of the watchmen, you will be told and taught how to interface with messengers from the realm of divinity. And just in case you are in doubt, the day we teach on how to interface with messengers, I will do a practical. I will do a practical and show you some things in heaven, how they can manifest here. Maybe it will add to your faith and encourage you to believe that this preacher knows what he's talking about. He has seen it. The Lord visited me. And the Lord showed me that his deliverance in my family will not be instant. It will take place at a time when a child, a male child, will be born. You see, there are many mysteries in the workings of God. Except you stay with God for a long time, you will not know him. And if you speak for him, you'll be lying. Because the kingdom of God operates by mysteries. You need to be a student of the Holy Ghost for like 10 years for you to understand the patterns of his speaking. So that when you stand and you speak for him, it is consistent with the patterns that you have learned. And even if you are not speaking by inspiration and you spoke by experience, if someone runs with it, he will not lose his way. The Lord showed me that it was the deliverance of our family was going to coincide with the birth of a man-child into our family. I must have told you this story before. And I checked to see when this child will be born. Fortunately for me, he was talking about my child. I was not married then. I didn't know my wife when I started that prayer. But the God we speak of is not restricted by space, by time. The bridge between the heavens and the earth is a watchman. A man that seeks to know becomes the answer to the cry of a generation.
I received an announcement. This shall be the sign of my visitation. From the time I received that announcement, I began to give praise to God because I have seen the policy direction of heaven in keeping with the issues of my family. Now I waited to see the signs of when that which God has spoken will come to pass. I think it took, it was the year after I saw my wife. Our courtship was five years. Then she took in months after our wedding. And when I went to the hospital and took my son up, I saw that he was the boy I saw in my vision. Because I've received the announcement, whenever I prayed, I knew it was time. The powers of darkness in my family had expired. So I point to my family. I said, the power in you that has brought this sorrow, I curse you. You know the authority of my cursing is in keeping with what? An understanding of the timing. Oh, you are not with me. I think I need to give you another scripture. Give me Psalms 10. Psalms 102, verse 12, I believe. But thou, O Lord, shall endure forever. And thy remembrance unto all generations. 13. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea. A set time is come. This kind of prayer point, this is what we call prophetic prayer. This man has some insight. The first insight he has is that it is the time to favor Zion. How did he know that? He knew it through an announcement. So this prayer was not a prayer prayed from the platform of ignorance. There were some things he had heard, he knew, and he was using it to challenge God. And thou shall arise and have mercy on Zion. For the time to favor her. Yea, that said time is come. I curse the powers. The spirits. The altar. The priest. That gave Satan access to my family. The iniquity that foiled and gave Satan the authority to, to waste. The time of the validity of that iniquity had passed. And God had shown me that the time of redemption, the door of the redemption had opened. I did the work of a watchman. As I called forth redemption, I called forth salvation, I called forth. In order for the Holy Spirit to encourage me, he told me how long I will live. If you hear there was a bomb and people died, <laughs> I'm not there. That there was a stray bullet. Police was angry. And one shot without instruction. Somebody fell. Don't bother to check. I'm not the one. Ooh. I heard some announcements. The wickedness. The darkness. The darkness had to stay. Because when you get to the age of 21 in my own nuclear family. Satan will visit you. And after the war I fought, my siblings escaped the vengeance. And I knew a new season had started for us. Why sit we still until we die? That's the question. When will you awake? When will you be provoked? Except you hear an announcement from God. There is nothing suggestive of the fact that the seasons are about to change. It will require you arising. We are going to pray tonight for the next few minutes as I extract a commitment from you so that heaven will take you seriously and God will come into your space and make announcements about the things he wants to do. He said in the city of David his savior is born. The people 
taking care of their sheep, their flock by night, didn't know what was going on. Just like many of us don't know what is going on until there is an announcement. I want to provoke you this evening to make up your mind that I will stand upon my watch. I will stand. Except you are not tired of the people dying and death every other month. There's someone in the family for burial looking for coffee. So much so that the coffee business has become so lucrative. Sometimes the whole shelves are empty because that Friday they came and took all the 12 coffins that the man labored to make all the 12 coffins sold in one day ambulances coming to fetch coffins who will stand for God and say I will stand here until he answers me you need to study the book of Psalms and see the doggedness of David Sometimes when he's discouraged, he speak to his soul. My soul! Why are you discouraged? Trust in the Lord. This is David speaking to his soul. Just like you get discouraged. Maybe you pray for three days, pray for 17 days. And the kind of answers you were expecting didn't come. David will speak to his soul. My soul, calm down. Sometimes the race is not a sprint. It's a marathon. And only those that have the capacity to endure will last. I will still be standing when the race is finished. And I will receive the intelligence to undo the powers of darkness in my space. You need a determination to watch. Can we pray today? Tell God how determined you are. I will be that man standing. Creating earthly permission for heavenly interference. Because of my labor. The people under my jurisdiction will see light. I stand on the behalf of myself I stand on behalf of my children I stand on behalf of them of my household I stand and I'll keep standing I'll keep standing I'll never be weary until there is an announcement for if the trumpet gives an uncertain sound who shall prepare himself to the battle will you be standing will you be standing Will God find you standing? Will your life be the excuse that God will see in the earth for making announcements? I will stand. I will stand. I will stand for God in my land. I will stand. 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 Risco feta bugo do gosamina ramino se si aboko mena kulia braska falama koberato si risco fe la muko bakatala abarai son sama kabela koria mahala brusketi. I will stand for God. In my land, my enemy is on the battleground. Lift the banner of Christ, bringing victory to my king. I will stand. In my land, who will stand? Who will stand? Who will stand? Oh, God, in the land. Psalms 51 verse 17 I want us to pray 
See, until somebody is provoked, the status quo will remain the same until the, someone here is provoked. The darkness, darkness has, doesn't recognize people that mourn. In fact, in witchcraft, when somebody is killed and the, because the person was so useful and so many people are crying, the person that killed that person will now be promoted in witchcraft because of the, the magnitude of sorrow. So witches enjoy the benefits from sorrow. So don't think that your sorrow will change anything. Rather, it will promote, give the person more rank and capacity to do more evil in the landscape. Until someone rises, nothing changes. Psalms 51 verse 17 says, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. Broken and a contrite God, O God, will thou not despise. This is the only weakness of God. God cannot look at a broken and a contrite spirit and ignore it. When you begin to push that matter and you push the matter and you push the matter and it becomes obvious that if God does nothing you are, you are doomed. He will rise up. So the question is who will stand for God in your land? Who will stand for God in your family? Who will stand for God in Nigeria? Who will stand for God in Benway State? This song I sang is supposed to extract a commitment. I will stand. Are you bold enough to tell God that? I will, I will be the one standing. I will be the one standing. I will be the one that will wake up in the night to press charges, press charges on heaven. I will be the one. I will stand. I will be standing. I will be standing. I will be standing. I will be standing. Can you register your commitment this night? Can you register? Can you register your commitment? I will be standing. Labo seke makade buru. Jemina ita kobre kaskata planta baboni. Zuba la mezike ta minakoria. Raskante bobora naski. Yanto seke makaburaski. I will be standing. I will be standing. I will be standing. I will be standing. Maya sobre ketila suma salahai. Reko seta muko balamo. Anto sala boko talia. Eka masata baboko kokroko toli makate babaya. Ia taba barata masata baboli makate babo. Ia taba bose ketele beretos ketobre. Mata baboria. Shabina kopelana. Raka bata baboko sete. Ie keke de 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 babo. Ia tose ketaba natala. Raska balana mamolia. Shama kopre ia tose mata bata tapa tapa bolo rata bosi kamatelia tapa tasa tapa bola makata tapa bolia shabola shama bola ia tapola rakata tapa bolo koda mahasale mahabranda tapa bolo koda raba bosa ta raba lado kose raba baba lada raba bala bosa ta. Rabba bala basobre, rabba la basayata, banta boboria basketa banda, barra basata babolata, yeke ke de bokote, rabo se, rabo malatata, ya basata babolata le, abres kome la mena kadela, abres kome la malatata ya, abra basata baboria, eskobre, raka bala bababa, raka sata baboria. Esko mala la la mama na ikama sobre raba doko so raba baba baba so ikama sobre aya kope la ba aya masende ila baba 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 ila la la baba 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 baba
36 verse 15 quickly he said he delivered that he delivered the poor in his affliction how does he do it and open it their ears in oppression what he does is that he opens their ears so that they can hear his announcement he opens their ears so that they can access what heaven is announcing about the affliction about the oppression can we pray and say God can you open our ears can you open our ears let us have the experience of having our ears open you have been deaf and that is why the situation has lingered we need to pray and ask the Lord open our ears Open our ears. 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 Make us wise by the Holy Ghost. Open our ears. 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 In the oppression. Open our ears. In the affliction open our ears the change begins when you can hear the change begins when i can hear the change begins when we can understand the announcement that god is making open my ears open my ears open my ears even if god wants to deliver you and you are dead your pressure will continue but the way he delivers us out of affliction is that he opens the ear. Oh, Mare Suke Manit Labro Copela Cabasata, Branta Baboca Pass, Esco Brigade, Labro Conte Mosquito Montalia, Ayaco Sala, Ayaco Mantelli, Ayaco Cunia, Ayaco Sala, Ayaco Sebregade. Ayako kuni masantalia, abra makata baba bolo, aske boko pre, iya kaboko salabata la, iya dobo kote bregede, iya minas kuba, lebros kenta, iya baba baba baba, rata baba tabra baba bolia. Open our ears, open our ears, open our ears, open our ears. La prosoke mane mantalia, abra masata, iya kasata. Rascata baba baba, a fresco pela me, aya consele, aya cosa menata, e coma tala baboria. Arata basic, arata basic, arata basata baboba, rante cose, raca matata babodocote, e a capasata, e a capasota, e a capacabata, e a cassetibo, e a capo de mata, e a capasata. Ia kama kola ba, ia kama suka, e kama ma, e kaso de mata, e kama marokotolia. Ah, ibo kusama, iso se, a brisco belaba, e brisco falata, a pamata ye, a broko belaye, isko bela kuria. In the name of Jesus. A few years ago, I was in a bus in a public transport, moving from one city to another city. 
And I was communing with God. And I was quarreling with God. The reason was because I went for a crusade. The, the quality of miracles I was expecting to see, I didn't see any. So I was in the bus saying, what did I do wrong? You say I should pray, I pray. The scripture you gave me to preach, I used it. Where did I go wrong? You abandoned me on the platform. And that was not the agreement. That was why I stayed in the room for eight hours, calling upon your name. And you, you just abandoned me. That's not fair. I was talking to God. That's how I talked to God. I, I opened my I'm real. Many of you come into God's presence with big English. Say, oh, sovereign king that you have a satanity. Wake up. Wake up and, and address a real God. I said, what did I do wrong? And while I was still lamenting and asking the questions, somebody died in the bus. Do you realize, God didn't answer my lamentation. What did I do wrong? What's the problem? Somebody died in the bus. That's a see you now. I am here. Somebody died. That one he answered quickly. My lamentation didn't answer. I said, what did I do wrong? Did I sin? Was it a statement I made while I was preaching? He didn't answer. Then somebody died. And I said, oh, see again. I am here. Somebody dies. You knew I'll be coming here. You, are, you came to embarrass me. He says she shall leave again. That one, she, he answered quickly. Oh. You know what? My ear heard it. And the lady came back to life. That was when I realized that what I was prayed for for eight hours was not the crusade miracles. I prayed so that I could raise the dead. But you see, the connecting cable, the circuit, in this circuit, what completes the circuit is the, the hearing. So there are many deliverances that God wanted to wrath around your life, but you could not hear the marching orders, the announcement. Can you ask him, heal my ears? Heal it, heal it. I've heard that many people have very wonderful relationships with you. Heal my hearing. Heal my hearing. Heal my hearing. Heal my hearing. Oh my. Heal my hearing. I don't want to be an empty Christian. An ordinary Christian. A victim of circumstances and situations. Heal my hearing in the name of Jesus Christ. Heal my hearing. Heal my hearing. Heal my hearing. Heal my hearing, Lord. So that I can hear you. So that I can hear you. When you want to end an affliction, when you want to change and turn the tide, may my ear be open to hear your voice in the name of Jesus Christ. Aske barabos konda mila, maita kopre sketa barata, iga barata branta baboria, ezuzi ali kopresko vali moko bali, abraske topriata baboba kampre, shemi no kopre, alabus kido, alabus santele, abrante baboria ziga bande, abrisko te bariko tabala, alababalata branta baboria, iskopri amaito. Ama mala kuske, ala mamoro kuske, ama niyasi, ala baburu kusamera, ikuske do, uroske tabe la mino kopre, alito skabe la mine, alito kopre gede, ziko bronze sebilato, abrata mabola maskala, brighta kobe da, isko pre, la brosko tome na kapalama, ya kabesuke na ba isko pre tame. 
la brosca mena zanda babola katala rascata babarata branda baboria a baba babo siko presco polomo y el cotama y cosque broco pelama raca peto cosque te que te que a paito capa a papala a papala suco busquivo ma rakaito e bonde y a cula ma campala escobra salatala e braita con bele y escovalato semina la babo siko teli Rai con felame, se mi la compa. Oh, heal my ears. Aba boko tobe, aba boko tamela. Sai compa dua, rasca tobe la pude. Alama mama ma. Oh, rasco me la me la cabrene. I love over him as Santelia. He will heal your ears. He will quicken your hearing. He will quicken your hearing. Stay up in the spirit. He will make you wise by the Holy Ghost so that the regime of the rule of the devil can come to an end. Oh, we will stand upon our tower. We will stand upon our watch. We will not allow the devil any inch, any, any penetration. Oh my God. Heal our hearing. Heal our ears in the spirit. Heal our ears in the spirit. Cause the least among us to become as strong as David. As strong as David. As strong as David. As strong as David. That oh Lord, you will quicken your people. You will quicken your people. You will quicken your people in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 28, beginning from verse 10 to 12. My final prayer point. Ah. Uh. The reason why I have not told you that I see a vision is because I, I don't understand what I'm seeing. I don't understand what I'm seeing. Oh. Oh. Open our ears. Open our ears. I see the vision of a woman pregnant and I saw the child die in the womb and I, I've been asking I said Lord what mean is this there's a woman watching me there online and you had a stillbirth your child died in your womb and you have been in a state of mourning wondering what you did wrong for that situation to find expression weep not for the Lord will visit you again he will open your womb he will give you a son and you will call him Abraham Isaiah chapter 28 verse 10 For precept must be upon precept Precept upon precept Line upon line Line upon line Here a little and there a little For with the stammering lips And another tongue will he speak unto these people To whom he said This is the rest wherewith ye May cause the weary to rest And this is the refreshing Yet they will not hear they will not hear. It's not as if God did not speak. But they were dull of hearing. He said to whom he said. This is the rest. God was announcing a formula for rest. 
was announcing a formula for refreshing. But the Bible says, yet they would not hear. I was with the pastor today and the pastor told me a heart-rending story. He was, I know that pastor, he's a great dreamer. His dreams are prophetic. And he ran to his senior pastor with a dream that he saw that his car had an accident. And he saw the driver, that the driver died. All right? That prayer point was brought on the pulpit and it was prayed for five minutes. We pray against the spirit of accident and stop the work of the devil in the name of Jesus. When the actual event was to happen, it was not a driver. It was the senior pastor that was on that seat. And he was not wearing his seatbelt. And there was an accident. And the car tumbled seven times. And his brain, he, he was flung out of the window. You know the situation of someone without um, seat belts? You know now, in our field of study, the safety, safety, safety. We have gone for a conference before and they showed us what happens to someone that doesn't have seat belts just in case the car tumbles four times. You'll be flung out of the car. That's what happened to the pastor. Mighty pastor. It was not that the revelation did not come. But the way the revelation was treated was not adequate. And even though it came, they did not really hear. Because if they had heard, it would have produced salvation. Finally, can we pray today that when God speaks, eventually, when he decides to speak, through any source he may choose, may we hear Oh, if you are wise, you will pray this one very well. May we hear. 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 May we, may we not despise warning of the Lord. May we not trivialize warnings from his presence. May we hear in the name of Jesus. So velai kampo rena eloma sabri akapelu kuskobri Rakose koko kobila kapresko vela mena. Enemo si kobali mahayete kufeske bobori mahay. Raska falaita kufaske brokopeta mina si. May we hear. Masaguria jemenai ta kopela ma iye koske to brokota manai. The global, a lot of skito braketa me na kubra alabarata. Those ke volanto ski boroto mokolia. Ramasanda baboko se minante i iko boroko samadaya. Rameskito brenda i akaboko se malia. Abresku falam, abreska fante kaboke tali, abresko pele. A branta babola mascada, a ramata la baboria, escopre, maca palata cuda, a breca bate cuda, a breca te imonte, a samaconda, a rama seca talima, a ranta baboria, esomo con belama, a berrama mamama santa, raca escopre, a samacaria, escopalata, a ranta babora mascada. Ikobre no mokoria, shemintaye, 
May we hear. May we hear. May we hear. May it rest upon our heart. Trouble us all. Bring us to the labor room of prayer. Cause us to bow our knees and our hearts before him. And seek his mercy. May we hear that the disasters ordained by the devil will be adverted. The circumstances engineered from the womb of wickedness will be averted. May we hear. Give us that ear. That ear that can hear you. That can hear you. And tremble. And tremble at your voice. And tremble at your voice. Oh God.